Welcome, fellow freaks, geeks, and nostalgic peeps to my channel, Slime and Slashers, where, yeah, we talk about everything from Nickelodeon slime to horror movie slashers, but plenty of stuff in between, including books, including readathons, including movies, because, yes, we're talking about all of the above today, because today I am doing a recommendation video for my readathon that I am hosting in April called Old School April. It's not just a readathon, it's a watchathon, and really you can call it a nostalgia-a-thon, because it's all about kicking it old school so let's go to the short intro when we come back i will have some freaking nostalgic awesome banger wrecks for you guys Welcome back, guys! Okay, I do want to remind you of a few things before we get into the recommendations, just very quickly. Alright, so I want to remind everyone that April is not only my awesome readathon, there's other readathons going on as well as Halfway to Halloween. If you're someone who enjoys celebrating Halfway to Halloween, then you can kind of craft your TBR and your watch list to represent that occasion and to celebrate that occasion and I will tell you a little bit how you can do that with my recommendations as we go on through the video but I do want to give a special shout out to some other readathons that are happening first and foremost I want to give a huge shout out to Cassidy from the YouTube channel covers with Cassidy she's fantastic she's so sweet she is running the really big epic readathon called Realmathon and she's doing that with a whole bunch of co-hosts including some of my friends who are co-hosting Lexi is going to be a co-host as well as Kaylee and they have a whole bunch of other fantastic hosts as well. I do encourage you guys, if you're already participating in my readathon, I really think you, if interested, can participate in that one too. I also want to give a special shout out to Trans Girl April. I think that is an awesome event that's going on in April. I know Ollie is really jazzed about it, and a lot of people I know are thinking about participating. And I do think that you could read stuff for my readathon as well as that readathon. So if either of those readathons interest you, please, please, please go find out more information about those. I will link announcement videos below for both readathons so that you guys can check it out. Now, I did not talk about this in my announcement video, but since that video has been released, I actually created a sign-up form for Old School April, so if you have not officially signed up, please do so by using the link down below and signing up. And that's another reason why I want to give Cassidy a huge shout out because I saw the things she was doing last year and this year when I went and researched forms. She really designed a great sign-up form as well as a point submission form. So not only did I create a sign-up form, but I also have created a submission form so that people can submit the books they've read and the movies they've watched and the bonus prompts they've completed to earn points. So guys, there will be the form linked below and it will be active on April 1st and you could use that instead of just DMing to the Instagram account at Old School April your proof or going to the Discord and showing your proof, you you can do the submission form. We still encourage you to take screen captures of attending sprints and share them to the Discord just for fun, but now that is not the official way. You have to show proof. Now you can use the form, and it's much easier to calculate points that way. So I do encourage you when you're going to submit you know, a book you've read or a movie you've watched and calculate the amount of points you'll earn for your team by doing that, please use the form once again. I do want to remind everyone that April will be full of awesome activities. Also, we have a Spotify playlist, which is on our Discord. We have desktop backgrounds for each team because, again, old school April, in case you missed it, it's a team event kind of based on Legends of the Hidden Temple. And we have three teams that are based off of teams from the original show, but you don't have to have seen the show to participate with us. The three teams are Blue Barracudas, Silver Snakes, and Purple Parrots. I am a Blue Barracuda. If you're still torn on a team, I would say give you your allegiance to Silver Snakes when you use the sign up form below and it'll ask you to pick a team. I would say Silver Snakes has the lowest amount of members, but we'll be averaging points per team. So you basically add up the points, divide by the number of people on the team. And so that's how we'll determine the two teams that will go to face off in the final. 
but I just want to remind everyone that the Discord has tons of information. It has the readathon prompts, the watchathon prompts, the bonus prompts. It has details. It's going to have my recommendation list that I'll be talking about today. It has everything. It has the sign-up form. It has the submission form for points. It also has information about when we'll be holding watch parties and sprints. We also, I think, might have a game night. And of course, we have a sleepover scheduled for April 29th. And we've got our closing ceremony scheduled for April 30th. Also, I really want to try to have a DJ night where on Discord I play some music and, you know, we could turn our cameras on or off. It doesn't matter, but I think that would be a lot of fun. I have to figure out how it works, though. So I'm still working on that. But again, I really encourage everyone to join our official Discord. It is linked below. You could, like I said, find all the other stuff I mentioned. You could find the printables that I created. You could find blank bingo boards bingo boards with the prompts written on them. You can find special Instagram story graphics. You can find awesome just details. You can find an FAQ that's on there. And also, if you don't have Discord, there's a link tree in our official Instagram bio. So you could always click that link tree and it's got all of those links as well. Okay, without further ado, let's get into the recommendations. So we're starting off with book recommendations for all the readathon prompts. Again, this is a readathon watchathon. You could participate just in the readathon, just in the watchathon. You can do both. You can do the bonus prompts. You don't have to do the bonus prompts. You could do a few of the bonus prompts. It doesn't matter. So anyway, here are my suggestions for the readathon stuff. Readathon prompt number one says read any Goosebumps book or read a book that fits the vibe or theme of an Are You Afraid of the Dark episode. The publishing year of these books don't matter. So for Goosebumps, there's tons of examples. Obviously, One Day at Horrorland, The Curse of the Mummy's Tomb, The Horror at Camp Jelly Jam, Welcome to Camp Nightmare. Here are two of my favorites, Welcome to Dead House, and of course, a classic, The Haunted Mask, which I did read last year for Old School April. So I will not be reading this this year, but you can't go wrong with The Haunted Mask. If you want to go the other direction and read a book that fits the vibe of an Are You For The Dark episode, it's very easy to do that. I will link my recommendation document below, which has a complete list of Are You For The Dark episodes and the episode synopses. And you can click on that if you're still wanting more ideas about, you know, general themes of episodes that you could match a theme of a book to. And here are some examples that I didn't talk about in my announcement video. I did give quite a few examples of episodes paired with types of books, but here's some more that I didn't talk about. The Tale of the Dark Music is an episode that you could pair with a book featuring a band or music, like, for instance, Grady Hendrix's We Sold Our Souls. There's also an episode called The Tale of the Prom Queen. You could read a book featuring school dances or featuring prom. The Tale of the Full Moon. You could read a werewolf book or story. There's an episode called The Tale of the Shiny Red Bicycle. You could just read a ghost story. You can read a book or story featuring aliens for the episode The Tale of the Hatching. There's also The Tale of the Magician's Assistant, so you could read a book or story featuring magic because that episode features magic. Prompt number two, read any horror book published or set in the 80s. Or you could read a middle grade or YA book published or set in the 80s, or just read a book with a retro vibe. So I have recommendations for each little part of this. For this, you could read any paperback from hell type of book that was published back in the heyday of horror in the 1980s, of course. And some examples of books that I've really enjoyed that I've read from the 80s, The Breeze Horror. Such Nice People by Candace Caponegro. This one is hard to find, but you can find a digital copy to read on archive.org, which I will have linked in the Discord. Another book that I think is so underrated and marvelous and wonderful, but it is a chunker. This is Toady by Mark Morris. It's got some fantasy elements to it, but the horror imagery is really where it's at with this book. That is the highlight of this book, and it's a wonderful coming-of-age story. One of my favorite reads from last year in 2022. Highly recommend super underrated author and super underrated and not really discussed book. Another old school book that I've really enjoyed, Off Season by Jack Ketchum. Jack Ketchum is wonderful. This is super gory. It's a cannibal type of story, but it is fast paced. It is interesting. It is action packed. I loved it. It's also emotional too. 
All right, so here are some more modern books that are actually set back in the 80s. So if you want to read something that was published not too far back, but was set in the 80s, we've got My Best Friend's Exorcism by Grady Hendrix, of course. This is a possession story. It's also about friendship and lots of 80s nostalgia in these pages, so this would be perfect. Next up, Video Night by Adam Caesar. This takes place in the 80s, and it's just got some wonderful references. It also feels like you're reading a horror movie, if that makes sense. I really liked this. We've got like aliens involved and isn't this cover fantastic too? Uh, this is really an underrated Adam Caesar book. Like, you know, everyone talks about Clown in a Cornfield, but I actually liked this book better. A book that a lot of people love, Cirque Berserk. Set in 1989, it's definitely got some retro vibes. You could see that the cover is super retro looking and I didn't absolutely love it. I thought it was okay, but a lot of my friends really, really adored this story. So I think that it'd be great to recommend it to you guys. And that's why I'm talking about it right now because I was like, just cause I don't love it doesn't mean that I shouldn't talk about it because I know a lot of people who did love it. So yes. Disco Death Trap takes place around New Year's in the 80s, and this is also kind of got a slashery type of vibe to it. This is by Cameron Robique, and look at this fantastic cover. We've got some bloody roller skates and a, a disco ball, which is half disco ball, half skull. And last but not least, here's another coming-of-age story. This is Jedi Summer. And this just seems fantastic. I have not read it yet, but it is short and sweet. So if you're looking for something shorter because you're trying to read a lot for different readathons, this would be a good choice for you. A boy and his little brother wander through the loosely stitched summer of 1983. It was a magical one full of sun and surrealism of lessons and loss and of growing up and figuring it out. Some more modern books that take place in the 80s. We've got Camp Ghoul Mountain Part 6, the official novelization by Jonathan Rabb. VHS Terrors, which is a three book series by Puppet Combo and Regina Watts. I have one that I'll be showing you later when we talk about mood read suggestions. Strong Bones by Robert J. Patterson. And you don't have to read horror for this. You can read romance or whatever you want as long as it fits the prompt. I know this prompt specifically says either a horror book or a middle grade book or just any book with a retro vibe. So that's how you can get around the horror part of it or even the middle grade or YA part of it. Just read a book with a retro vibe. It doesn't have have to be set in the 80s necessarily. It just has to have some kind of retro vibe. But more examples of modern books set in the 80s, The Impossible Fortress by Jason R-E-K-U-L-A-K. -E I know I'm going to mispronounce it, so why not just spell it? It's a coming of age, but also kind of a romance. Another book, 8-Bit Christmas by Kevin Jug Jagubuski. <laughs> Signal to Noise by Sylvia Moreno-Garcia. And finally, IQ84. And that is a translated book, I believe. And actually, it's it's been talked about quite a bit. I think it's a series. Okay, next up, readathon prompt number three. Read an animal attack book. The publishing year does not matter. So literally, you could read a book from any year. So I suggest to you guys Hellhound by Ken Greenhall because that is one of my favorite animal attack books of all time. It is a more serious animal attack book, whereas other ones are trashy and fun and you could just not think. But yeah, Hellhound has something to say. It's dark. It's disturbing. And my friend Kelly, who's a co-host of this readathon, you could find her at Kelly Hooked on Books. Her From Hell Book Club is reading that as their official book club choice for the month of April. So I do suggest you check it out and you'd be reading it for her club as well as accomplishing a prompt. Another animal attack book you could read, Killer by Peter Tonkin and Valent Court Books just re-released this as part of their paperbacks from Hell line. So you could get a new copy. Another book you could go with, Cujo by Stephen King, another more serious animal attack book. It's not like, you know, nonsensical and fun, but one that is nonsensical and fun is The Rue by Alan Baxter, and that is a modern book, but the cover looks like it's from the 80s, and the story feels like it takes place in the 80s because it just feels like one of those old school, corny, cheesy 80s animal attack books, but it's not. Here's what The Rue looks like. Isn't it fantastic? Look at this kangaroo with the glowing eyes. Killer kangaroo, see you out back. <laughs> of course, it wouldn't be me if I didn't tout one of my favorite animal attack books ever, The Nest. Is it perfect? No, there is kind of a dry little section that's full of scientific facts. But despite that, this is fantastic. It's got some poetic language, which doesn't seem to go with a book that is about roaches. But 
it's there. Some other ones that come off the top of my head, Slugs by Sean Hudson would be a good one. I read that last year. Another one, Moonbane. This is more about werewolves, so you could use it for the Are You For The Dark vibe book. But uh, this, yeah, you could consider it an animal attacking, even though technically werewolves aren't real animals. Creature feature type of books would work. So yeah, this is by Al Ser Antonio, and I believe there is a digital edition of this online. And I think there's also an audiobook of this as well. Here we've got two old school middle grade animal attack books. We've got The Rats by Paul Zindel and Night of the Bat by Paul Zindel. And I haven't read the bat one, but I have read Rats and it's fantastic. I actually liked this better than the adult version of The Rats, which I think is kind of absurd that I feel this way. But this was a lot of fun and it surprised me how many bloody passages and how much violence was written on the page of this movie great book. Here we have Creeping Crawling Cinema by Edward Brock. So this takes a look at animal attack movies like from way back in the day. So I think it's kind of cool and even though it's about movies that feature creature features or animal attacks, I still think it counts to read this. Again, you can bend the prompts. You could be as loose or as strict with your interpretation of the prompts as you want. As I've said many times in my announcement video, I've also said it a lot on the Discord. Someone asked me, can they read Animorph books? You know, and I said, yeah, you could read those for the animal attack. Now, I don't know if the kids morph into animals and then attack. I don't think they do. I think they solve mysteries or fight crime. I can't remember. It's been a long time since I read Animorphs. But I said, I don't care. You can count it for animal attack. It works, in my opinion, because, you know, the stories feature animals very heavily because the kids are morphing, hence the name Animorphs, into animals. So there you go. Another one I haven't read, but definitely want to read at some point. This is The Meg by Steve Alton. And yeah, it's a shark attack book. Of course, you think shark attack books, you think Jaws. Now, Jaws, I wouldn't say that's the greatest animal attack book. In fact, I think it's kind of dry. I did just buy Jaws the Revenge because I want to read it because I hear it has a voodoo subplot to it. So that's, that kind of interests me. But when we're talking about Jaws, the novel, the first novel, I do think it's a little bit dry and it kind of lags a little bit. And last but not least for Animal Attack suggestion, we've got Clowns vs. Spiders by Jeff Strand. This is so funny. If you like horror comedy, I think you should give this a chance. It is absurd. It is totally not believable. You definitely have to suspend your disbelief, but it is such a wild zany ride and I had such a blast reading this last year. It was one of my favorite books of the year and yeah, as you could tell from the title, we do have clowns facing off against some spiders. So the spider part would count for the animal attack. So I say if you are interested, go ahead and pick it up. It would work. Readathon prompt number four, nostalgic technology. Read a book featuring older technology on the cover or in the story. Things such as cassettes, arcade machines, VHS tapes, Walkman, radio, Polaroid pictures, a typewriter. The publishing year of this does not matter. So here are some suggestions. Scan Lines by Todd Kessling. You can see this is a very graphic cover, so watch out. There is another edition of this book that is not as graphic as this. But yeah, as you could see from the lines, it's like the lines you'd see on like an old VHS tape that you'd be watching on a tube TV. All Night Terror by Adam Caesar and Matt Serafini. Horrorama by C.V. Hunt. Dead Daughters by Tim Meyer. That one has a Polaroid picture on the cover. The Between by Ryan Leslie. Awful Awesome. A Journey Through the Wild World of So Bad They're Good Movies. And this is by Jacob Gustafsson. Gustafsson. <laughs> anyway, there are tube TVs and a VHS player on the cover. So there you go. Nostalgic technology right there on the cover. And it's a book about movies, which I kind of like sometimes. Another wonderful suggestion, and this is pretty darn new. This is found in an anthology. And as you can see, the whole freaking thing looks like a VHS tape cover. Freaking awesome with the label and all. I love it. Of course, it was upside down just now. <laughs> but yes, you guys get the picture. There's also a six book series called Underworld Theater by Eddie Generis. Another book by Eddie Generis is called The Midnight Exhibit, Volume 2. Things have gotten worse since we last spoke. That one has internet chat rooms featured in the story. And I know chat rooms still exist, but when you think chat rooms, you really think like early 2000s. So to me, that's why I consider it nostalgic technology in the 
story. Another one, Lost Signals by Max Booth III and Lori Michelle. Then this one I'm super interested in. This one has an arcade machine on the front and the cover looks so badass. It's called Polybius, P-O-L. Y B I U S by David Irons and it just seems like a lot of fun. I believe it takes place around Halloween and for the cover alone I'm very intrigued by this book. Another one, The 86 Fix by Keith A. Pearson and this one features a cassette tape on the cover. My Riot by Rick Spears and Emmett Helen which is a YA graphic novel. We've got Transfer, which I did read last year by Terry M. West. That has an old-looking staticky TV on the front. Also, as I mentioned in my announcement video, The Ring has a videotape featured in the story. And also, last year I mentioned that people could read The Devil of Nanking because this features old-school film. I forgot what millimeter film it is specifically, but it's old-school film as in like a reel of film featured in this story, so that counts as technology in the story. If you're still looking for more recs of books with technology on the cover or in the story itself, please go check out my friend Michelle's video. She has a wonderful YouTube channel called Michelle's Melancholia, and last year she made a video for my readathon, Nostalgic November, which had the same prompt in that readathon, and she recommended some books that would fit this exact prompt. So I will have her video linked below at the exact timestamp she begins talking about the books featuring technology. Next up, super easy, prompt number five, a mood read. A book published in or set in 2003 or earlier, or just a book with a retro vibe. And I've got a freaking boatload of examples for you guys. I gave quite a few nonfiction examples in my announcement video, so if you missed those, you can go back and check those out. Some more nonfiction books that I didn't talk about in that video include Life Moves Pretty Fast, The Lessons We Learned from 80s Movies by Hadley Freeman, also the great book of 1980s trivia, Crazy Random Facts and 80s Trivia by Bill O'Neill, VHS Cover Art, 1980s to the Early 1990s by Thomas Hodge, and VHS Collecting, The Modern Relevance of Home Video by Corey J. Gorski. Some other nonfiction type of books that have a retro flair that I actually own. I want to show you guys some of these because they got cool covers. Here we have Things 90s Kids Realize, and this is by Christopher Hudspeth. That's so 90s. Look at this fantastic cover. So incredible. We've got freaking Tamagotchi, old school cell phone, VHS, rollerblades, the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. And this has a very beautiful inside with some really cool illustrations. See the Fresh Prince over here. Yes, and Carlton. I began reading this last April for Old School April. This is Did I Do That? The best and worst of the 90s. I really was enjoying it. I just didn't get a chance to finish it. I might continue reading a little bit of this this year. We'll see. Something ridiculous. This is Festivus, the book, which would be appropriate for Christmas time, but hey, since we're diving into all things 90s, 80s, 70s, and beyond, I thought this would be appropriate to mention. It's all about Festivus, which is mentioned in the show Seinfeld, which of course is one of the greatest 90s shows, and also one of the greatest shows of all time, period. Here we have an old book about NSYNC and a new magazine about NSYNC. I found this one right here at the end of last year in a freaking supermarket, and it's all about boy bands. So not just about NSYNC, but NSYNC's featured on the cover and on the back and the most throughout. So I'm like, oh, hell yeah, NSYNC gets the biggest shout out here. Hee <laughs> hee. But of course, Backstreet Boys are discussed in other stuff too. I have not read this magazine yet, but I would love to, to read it in... April. That would be fantastic. And this one I had since I was a kid. This is the official book and it's falling apart and it's got like bio information about them and stuff. But yeah, fun, fun, fun. Another nonfiction book, The Art of Goosebumps. And this is fantastic. This just came out last year. And actually my friend Cameron from the channel Library Macabre, by the way, if you're looking for nostalgic content, go check out his channel for sure because he's got you covered there. But he actually put this as one of his top five reads of last year. This is how much he liked this book. So, And the last nonfiction suggestion I have is John Hughes, A Life in Film, The Genius Behind, Ferris Bueller, The Breakfast Club, Home Alone, and more. So I have not fully read this. I've had it for a while, but it does seem very interesting. It's got some great photographs from his movies and some tidbits. Oh, look, John Candy. I love John Candy. R.I.P. Wonderful guy. Uncle Buck. Great movie. 
and of course he was in Home Alone as well. He had a small part in that. But yes, I'm very interested in this. There is a documentary about, you know, looking for John Hughes. This one big fan went on a mission to try to hunt him down and find him. <laughs> that sounded like extreme, like they wanted to hunt him down and get him. No, they just wanted to talk to him and interview him, but they never did get in contact with him. So that's kind of a bummer. There's actually a book about it and a documentary about it, but this is separate. But I just find John Hughes fascinating. He did become kind of a recluse at the end of his life. However, you can't deny the great, great impact he had on movies back in the 80s especially. He really released some great movie gems for sure. More recommendations and nothing happened in between the last set of recommendations and this one, just so you know. So, <laughs> so another thing you could do for the mood read prompt is because a lot of other prompts reference reading something like 80s-ish or 90s-ish, if you want to read stuff from the 70s, you could use your mood read to do that. So some Pirouette from Hell books that I like from the 70s, Elizabeth by Ken Greenhall. It says Jessica Hamilton, but it's the same person under a different name. So Ken Greenhall, Jessica Hamilton, both are the same book. Elizabeth, it's wacky, it's disturbing, it's weird. I loved it. Another really interesting book that isn't really pure horror, this is kind of like a thrillery type of book. We're following a detective named Harry Angel, and he's trying to investigate these weird, very gruesome series of crimes. This is Falling Angel by William Hortischberg. <laughs> don't know how to say it well, right, I don't know. Anyway, pretty cool. I really enjoyed this. The ending is bonkers. There is a film with Robert De Niro in it that is based on this book, but I think the book is much, much better. A super slow burn, but a very atmospheric read. We've got The Auctioneer that was published in the 70s by Joan Sampson. Of course, this is another Valent Court paperback from Hell book. So of course it's a reprint of an old school book that is very rare to find. So it's awesome that Valent Court released this other edition so that people can find it and have a chance to read it. The series by Regina Watts that I mentioned earlier, this is one of the books in the series. It's called Babysitter Bloodbath, and this definitely would have an 80s vibe, but it's a newer book. It's not necessarily set in the 80s, I don't think, but it's definitely very 80s-esque for sure. Another book with an 80s flair, so a modern book with a more retro vibe, we've got Night Shoot by David Sodogren. I feel like Sodogren is really good at capturing a movie, especially an old school movie vibe in his books. They read really fast. They read like you're watching a movie and it's wonderful. This one's really entertaining, also very gruesome. I enjoyed it quite a bit. Similar to Night Shoot, we've got Bone Saw by Patrick Lacey, another book that feels like you're reading a horror movie. Now, this isn't necessarily set in the past, but it definitely has a kind of retro horror movie vibe to it. So if you're just basing your reads for the mood read off of vibe, like having something having an old school vibe, this would be fine. Even though technically it doesn't take place back in the day, that is okay. It, it, it still kind of works in my opinion. Here we have some middle grade books that I feel like are very reminiscent of Goosebumps style of books. So to me, you could read this and it does capture that retro vibe because it's very similar to the idea of Goosebumps, which of course were very popular in the 90s. And this is even formatted, if you look at the back, like a Goosebumps book and the way the whole back is set up, the design of it. This is the Frightland series and there's different ones. This one is The Wild Man of Shaggy Creek. Here we have Creepover. There's a whole bunch of these books. And again, this reminds me of like, you know, old school chapter books, old school series from back in the 80s and 90s. So I feel like this would definitely capture a retro flair and it would work for the mood read or for other prompts that reference you reading a book with an old school vibe. One of my favorite modern middle grade series right now, Monster Street. There are four books. I've read three of the four and have really enjoyed all of them. This is probably one of my favorites. This is the Halloweeners. And if you're celebrating halfway to Halloween, this would be perfect. And to me, like these types of books are so reminiscent to Goosebumps. And that's why I say it can count for the retro vibe. Again, just to reiterate, lovely, lovely, lovely series, super cute, super atmospheric. And this one, like I said, would be perfect if you're looking for those Halloween-y vibes. 
a modern book for sure, but definitely feels like a Goosebumps book is Don't Call It All by Robbie Miles. Robbie is awesome. You could find him on Instagram. He's a marvelous dude, super nice, and he loves all things nostalgia. And I think that really shows when you check out his books because he's released more than just this one. He's also released The Time Watchers, which if, again, if you're looking to celebrate halfway to Halloween, this has you covered. And the reason this one has retro vibes is it's not necessarily like Goosebumps because it's a lot longer than a Goosebumps would be, but this has some nostalgia references, even though it's set in modern times. And a book that Kat suggested that's definitely more modern, but it's got some nostalgic references. This is Ready Player One. And again, if you read this for the mood read or for another prompt, you also get another bonus on top of whatever prompt you use it for because it's Kat's host recommendation. And so if you read a host rec, which there's a whole list of them, those were talked about in my announcement video, read any host rec and you get a point per rec you read. Here are some more books with a retro flair. We've got Misfit City Volume 1. We've got Chopping Spree, which is a book that features a 1980s themed mall, but it's set in modern day, I believe. We also have the Slasherback series of books. It's four books by Brian Berry. It's a series of novellas and novels with an emphasis on the massacre films of the 80s and 70s. And it's definitely got a slasher vibe to them. Then we have The Final Gate by Wesley Southard, a loving homage to 1980s horror. Then we have The October Society, Season 1 by Christopher Robertson. This has a nostalgic vibe, according to some reviews I read. And people in the reviews say it's very reminiscent of Are You Afraid of the Dark episodes. I heard The Wicked by James Newman is super nostalgic seeming. The Cursed Among Us by John Durgan also has some nostalgia vibes. Virgin Night by Christopher Robertson, which is a play, again, on slasher films, but it's a slasher novel. Then I've got a couple of Goodreads lists on my recommendation document for you guys if you're looking for even more. Also, be sure to check out the Rewind or Die series, which is a whole series of books. A lot of them are on Kindle Unlimited, and again, uh, you can search through those titles. There's a lot of them that feature nostalgic elements. Also, don't forget that there's tons of novelizations of different shows from the 80s and 90s. Specifically, there's a whole heap of them that are done based on Nickelodeon shows. So here we've got Kel Got Game and the Double Dare Game Book. So these would work for the mood read. Just wanna highlight some of these cool novelizations. We've got the Goonies storybook. We've got Casper, junior novelization. We've got Jurassic Park, the junior novelization. We've got the Black Cauldron. We've got The Secret of Nim. We've got D2. The Mighty Ducks are back. And again, you could find a lot of these. These are vintage, but you can find some of these on thrift books if you search, and they won't be too expensive. I found these at used bookstores or from friends. We've got The Adventures of Mary Kate and Ashley. Of course, that also used to be a show. This is the case of The Shark Encounter. Then we've got, of course, Wishbone. Wishbone. A uh, wishbone book like this, The Legend of Sleepy Hollow, would be great to celebrate halfway to Halloween if you're trying to do that. So heck yeah. More show tie-in types of books. We've got a lot of Buffy tie-in books that would work for a lot of different prompts in the readathon. This is Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Volume 2, The Willow Files. Here's a modern Buffy book, and I loved this book. It was our favorite book from last year. It was wonderful. This is In Every Generation by Kendar Blake, and I loved this book. Another Buffy book that I read last year, I didn't like it as much as In Every Generation, but this was still fun. This is Big Bad by Lily Anderson, and of course it would fit for the nostalgia vibe because Buffy is a nostalgia show, and this kind of, you know, has the same characters. Here we have The Secret Diary of Laura Palmer, and the, this, of course, is based off of Twin Peaks and love Twin Peaks. You could watch that as part of the Watchathon for sure. That would totally work, and this book would work for multiple prompts. Some more books based on movies and shows. We've got Growing Pains book here. This is Here's Mike Seaver and his family. Here we have a little mini novelization of The Nightmare Before Christmas. Here we've got some Star Trek books. We've got Star Trek middle grade books. Oh heck yeah, isn't this fun? Star Trek The Next Generation, Starfleet Academy. This is number one. So isn't that neat? And a book that Andrew recommended as his host rec. So this is Star Trek The Next Generation, X-Men Planet X. So it mixes Star Trek and X-Men characters. Awesome. Star Trek The Next Generation, I should say, which I love TNG. Here we have a Rocco's Modern Life themed comic, and this one's Rocco's Modern Afterlife. So 
It's Rocco with Zombies. Prompt number six, read a Fear Street book or a Point Horror book or a Christopher Pike book. In the recommendation document that is linked below, I have a complete list of Fear Street, a complete list of Point Horror books, and a complete list of Christopher Pike books. So you could look through the list. You could find a lot of these on thrift books if you don't own them. But if we're talking about something like Fear Street, they do have newer bind-ups of the Fear Street stories. So you, I bought this on Amazon. It's the first, I think, four stories? right? Yes, the first four stories in the series. So yeah, if you can't find a vintage copy of a Fear Street book, you could buy one of these bind-ups, and you might be, be able to find them as like an ebook as well. I'm sure the library might have some. So this is a suggestion if you're trying to go the Fear Street route. I really, really like Silent Night. Of course, it's more of a Christmassy one, but Silent Night was such a good read. It's probably my favorite Fear Street that I've read, so I totally recommend that. If you're going for point horror, we've got April Fools by Richie Tankersley Kuzik and Trick or Treat by Richie Tankersley Kuzik. So if you're trying to celebrate halfway to Halloween, here we've got Trick or Treat. Or if you want to celebrate April Fool's Day, we've got April Fools, which this is Alex's. Of course, Alex is at the channel The Bookubus. This is her host rec. I really love The Babysitter if you're looking for a good recommendation. My two favorite Christopher Pike out of the three I've read, so I really like two. The third one was Witch, which I thought was fun, but not my favorite. I loved Monster. Monster's definitely probably really high up there. And The Midnight Club was one of my favorite reads of last year. This one isn't really horror though. This one has more emotional elements in it. Prompt number seven, Teen Witch. Read a book with magic, magical elements, magical items, wizards, sorcerers, witches, cursed objects, or occult or supernatural elements. The publishing year does not matter. Here are some suggestions. We've got The Witches by Raul Dahl. This would be perfect. I love the movie, by the way, with Angelica Houston. She's fantastic. I've not seen the remake. Don't really care about the remake. I like the old school version, but I've never read the book, so I gotta get to this one day. Occult supernatural stuff is definitely going down in Goddess of Filth. I haven't read it yet, but I've heard great things about this, and it's super, super short and little. So this could be a great addition if you're looking for something magical or supernatural that you haven't yet, you know, put onto your TBR. This could be the one for you. I mentioned this in my announcement video. Here we've got The Babysitter's Coven. I also mentioned this in the announcement video. If you're looking to read a possession story, you can totally do that. To me, that counts as like a supernatural thing and a cult thing going down. So one of my favorite possession stories that I've read this year was Come Closer by Sarah Grand, and I highly recommend it. I had a great time with this book. If you're specifically looking to read things featuring a cursed object or a haunted object, we've got Heart Shaped Box. And this is kind of polarizing. Some people hate the main character in this, but I love this book for the story, for the mystery, for what was going down, for seeing how things would play out. A book that a lot of people I know really enjoyed, including myself. This is The Amulet by Michael McDowell. Of course, the cursed object is a haunted amulet. There's some crazy deaths in here, like really crazy deaths, that I thought were super creative and unique. We kind of have a haunted... Alexa type of device in this, but this book is about so much more than that. It's really not what it appears to be when you begin the story, but I love this book and I had to suggest it because it was such a great read. This is This Thing Between Us by Gus Moreno, and yeah, I just read it last month and I loved it. And last but not least, Annabelle by Ruby Jean Jensen. I have not read this one yet, but I hear this one is really good. We've got a haunted doll. And this is the vintage copy, but you can find this in a newer edition on Amazon, so you don't have to have this awesome, badass vintage copy. But I sure am glad that I have it, because it's fantastic to look at. Prompt number eight, read any horror book published or set in the 90s, or read a middle grade or YA book published or set in the 90s, or any book with a retro flair. All right, so let's go through some books that were released in the 90s. We've got Boy's Life by Robert McCammon. This is not a horror book. It's got some magical realism, but it's just a fantastic book. So I could not mention it. I really love Robert McCammon. I think he's super underrated. I've already mentioned him once, but he is also underrated, just like Robert McCammon, Mark Morris. I love Toadie and I love Stitch. Stitch was published in 1991, I believe, and this book, I just read it at the beginning of this year with my friend Alex, the bookubus, and it was fan freaking tastic had a great time, so unique, so weird. I loved it. One of my favorite paperback from hell books that I've read, Book of the Damned by D.A. Fowler, so weird, about this cursed book, 
and whoever reads it starts to imagine they're living out scenarios in the book that they read and that can get quite dangerous very fast and there's this kind of devilish character in here who's super gross and super disturbing so this has it all it has humor it has zaniness it also has freaking a bleakness to it so i love this book another unique old school 90s book that i enjoyed wet bones by john shirley this was a good time. If you're just looking for vintage middle grade, I have some examples here. There are plenty more. I have a whole bunch of 90s vintage books, middle grade books specifically up here, which I can show you some footage of. Of course, that includes Bone Chillers. It includes Dead Time Stories. It includes Graveyard School, Shivers. We also have a whole bunch of others, Christopher Pike's Spooksville and Girl Talk and Boy Talk and tons of other things. Uh, I've got this whole shelf that I just love because it's so colorful. Now for some more modern books that are set in the 90s or about the 90s. This is, ah, that's what I call horror, an anthology of 90s stories. So this is all like 90s themed horror stories and I haven't dug into it yet. It's brand new, but look at this awesome cover. So happy to own this. Katrina's host wreck is The Worm and His Kings by Haley Piper and this takes place in the 90s, so this would totally work. Mina and the Undead, as well as Mina and the Slayers, are both set in the 90s. And there's going to be another book in the series as well. These books are by Amy McCaw. She has a wonderful YouTube channel. She's a fantastic person. I love her. And these are very reminiscent of Buffy in terms of it's got these great Buffy vibes. It's vampire stories. We've got this young girl kind of reconnecting with her sister in New Orleans, where I'm from. So, yes, New Orleans, baby, is really represented very well in these books. I love the way Amy captured the vibe of the city and yeah the whole the whole thing feels very 90s in the best way the southern book club's guide to slaying vampires this takes place in the 90s grady hendrix he's amazing i know most people have read this but just in case you're looking for something and didn't know it's set in the 90s bitch so it would work another book set in the 90s mall rats by ivy tholen i have read taste like candy and permanent damage by ivy tholen and really enjoyed both ivy tholen kindly sent me this physical copy and she signed it she also sent me a physical copy of tastes like candy and signed it so that was so sweet of her this has neon on the cover as well so it worked for that prompt too and isn't this cover fantastic by the way this is my official book club pick for the month of april if you're participating in my book club the midnight book society this will be our official read also don't forget that my co-host amy from amy noel reads she has a book club called the dark hearts book club and her book club is also very thematic for this very prompt she'll be reading for her club head like a hole by andrew van way and that's her official book club pick for april and it's perfect because it's set in the 90s so woo, it would totally work i will link her discord below so kelly's book club choices my book club choice and Amy's book club choice are all thematic for this readathon. Also, I want to mention that Kelly has a second book club in addition to her From Hell book club. She's got an indie book club called Eerie Indies, and her book for that is also thematic for Old School April. She'll be reading Hell Patrol with the Club by R.D. Taver, and that has a retro vibe. It's got a retro looking cover and is set during late stage satanic panic during the mid 90s. So perfect. It would work for this prompt as well or a mood read prompt or whatever. Some other quick books that are set in the 90s but are more modern reads, December Park by Ronald Malfi, My Ouija Boyfriend by David Irons, which I am so intrigued by but it's kind of long, Dead Flip, which has a super awesome looking cover by Sarah Ferzan, that's a YA book by the way in case you're wondering, and Hell's Bells, which is a rewind or die book, and that's by Lisa Quigley. Prompt number nine, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, read a story or book with a female protagonist or a story or book written by a woman. The publishing year doesn't matter. I've got some articles with suggestions linked in my recommendation document, which is linked in the description below. But some other things that I want to call out, like I said, Ivy Tholen I've mentioned, Lisa Tuttle, she's got some great horror, she's more vintage, D.A. Fowler would be a great woman author to check out, Haley Piper would be a great one to check out. So not only do I have links for female protagonist books, I have links to articles about books written by women, so check those out if you want more specific things. 
of books I didn't mention in this recommendation video so far. And last but not least, let's talk about the bonus slash replacement prompt, which is to read a book with neon on the cover. Again, I mentioned Tastes Like Candy by Ivy Tholen has neon on the cover. Another one we have, Lock Every Door by Riley Sager. Here's a modern book, but it definitely seems like it's a Christopher Pike looking book. This is Hall of Mirrors by Charles Ashe. And I found out about this book from my friend Cameron Chaney over at the channel Library Macabre. Again, he's linked below. Check out his channel. Geek Love by Catherine Dunn. I do think this is a neon type of yellowish orange. This font is definitely neon in my opinion. This is definitely a neon green. This is Sharp Objects by Gillian Flynn. You could also read books with an element on the cover that looks like neon lights, not just neon color. This is The Diviners. And yeah, this would totally fit because look at the text, the title text looks like neon lights. Some other examples of neon color on the cover. We've got Solstice, a tropical horror comedy. We Ride Upon Sticks, which is a book I've seen around a lot lately on Bookstagram. This is by Quan Berry, and it features witchcraft and is set in 1989. So not only does it have a neonish color on the cover, it would work for the witchcraft teen witch prompt or the set in the 80s or mood read, a retro freaking feeling book, whatever. Reluctant Immortals by Gwendolyn Kist. Paper Girls, which of course is a graphic novel series by Brian K. Vaughn and Cliff Chang. And finally, Rebel Girls by Elizabeth Keenan. That is a YA contemporary book. And I also have a Goodreads list linked on my recommendation document, which has a whole bunch of books featuring neon lights on the cover. So check that out. Okay, and I'm not going to go through this very in depth. I do want to say you could find Goosebumps episodes on Netflix. If you're wondering how to watch Goosebumps, because that's one of the Watchathon prompts. Watchathon prompt two, watch any 80s horror movie. Happy Birthday to Me is one that I love. We've got The Thing, The Stuff, Killer Clowns from Outer Space, Fright Night, Fun House, Prom Night, Hellraiser, The Howling, Silver Bullet, so many good choices, Sleepaway Camp, The Fog, Watchathon prompt number three, watch an episode of 90s Nickelodeon or watch a Nickelodeon movie. You could also watch a show that aired as part of Nick at Night or if you didn't have Nickelodeon where you grew up, then you can pick a different channel with a show or movie that was shown that is nostalgic for you. If you're looking to do Nickelodeon, I can suggest Are You Afraid of the Dark, The Adventures of Pete and Pete, Rugrats. Some of these episodes are on Hulu, some are on Paramount+. Plus. If you're looking for specific episodes of specific shows, I really love Halloweeny from The Adventures of Pete and Pete, and that would be perfect for Halfway to Halloween. I love Reptar on Ice or Toy Palace from Rugrats. Both of those are great. And if you're looking for Nickelodeon movies, Harriet the Spy and Good Burger are both classics. Watchathon prompt four, watch a movie or TV show set in the 80s or 90s, or watch a newer adaptation of an old school movie, show, or book. Some examples of movies, you've got the new Fear Street movies on Netflix, you've got adaptations of Agatha Christie books like Death on the Nile, you've got, you know, new renditions of Ghostbuster movies. They're not remakes, they're like newer renditions, different takes on them. You've got the remake of Candyman, you've got the new Scream. Examples of shows would include Bates Motel, because of course... That's a newer adaptation kind of in the Psycho universe. You've got The Midnight Club, which is all about Christopher Pike books. You've got the new episodes of Are You For The Dark? And it started with a, like a mini series called Are You For The Dark? Carnival of Doom, which was released a couple of years ago. Watchathon Prompt 5, Mood Watch. This is so easy. Watch anything from or set in 2003 or earlier, or just watch a movie or show with a retro vibe. Watch anything. This is so easy. You choose. Watch-a-thon prompt six. Watch an episode of any Disney Channel show or DCOM from the 90s or early 2000s. Some examples of shows include things that aired as part of Toon Disney, Vault Disney, or just regular Disney. So Weird, Smart Guy, Brotherly Love, The Famous Jet Jackson, Totally Circus, Bug Juice, Lizzie McGuire, Even Stevens, Tailspin, Goof Troop, Recess, DuckTales, Gargoyles, Darkwing Duck, Timon and Pumbaa, The New Adventures of Winnie the Pooh. Aladdin, The Little Mermaid, The Cartoon Show, Madeline, Chippendale Rescue Rangers, Zorro, of course the old school black and white Zorro that aired as a part of Vault Disney, Spin and Marty, The Mickey Mouse Club. You could do any of that. If you didn't have Disney Channel growing up, again, replace it with something you did have that was nostalgic for you. There's Disney Channel concerts that they used to have, like NSYNC, Backstreet Boys, Bewitched, Five. You could also celebrate Halfway to Halloween by watching specific 
Disney Channel original movies that have a Halloween-y flair like Under Wraps, Don't Look Under the Bed, Phantom of the Megaplex, or Halloween Town. Here's some DCOMs that were released in 2003 or earlier, Up, Up, and Away, Cadet Kelly, Motocrossed, Mom's Got a Date with the Vampire, Alley Cat Strike, The Other Me, Rip Girls, Quince, Miracle in Lane 2, The Luck of the Irish, Ready to Run, Stepsister from Planet Weird, The Color of Friendship, Horse Sense, Genius, Johnny Tsunami, Smart House, The Thirteenth Year, Model Behavior, Can of Worms, Punks, Xenon Girl of the 21st Century, Brink, You Lucky Dog, so many options. Watch a thon prompt 7. Watch any 80s movie or TV show episode. Some movie examples include E.T., Ghostbusters, The Time Bandits, The Brave Little Toaster, the Goonies, Princess Bride, Flight of the Navigator, Teen Witch, Uncle Buck, The Never Ending Story, The Dark Crystal, All Dogs Go to Heaven, Secret of Nim, Beetlejuice, Return to Oz, Who Framed Roger Rabbit, The Adventures of Milo and Otis, The Black Cauldron, Pee-wee's Big Adventure, The Great Mouse Detective, yes, you can watch Disney movies, The Little Mermaid, Not Quite Human, The Parent Trap 2, Sixteen Candles, Breakfast Club, Pretty in Pink, Ferris Bueller's Day Off, Labyrinth, Willow, The Land Before Time, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, Troop Beverly Hills, D-A-R-Y-L, Something Wicked This Way Comes, so many options, 80s shows, some examples include Star Trek The Next Generation, Pee Wee's Playhouse, The Real Ghostbusters, Fraggle Rock, Reading Rainbow, Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers, Garfield and Friends, TMNT, DuckTales, X-Files, Growing Pains. Watch a thon prompt eight. Watch any 90s horror movie. Jacob's Ladder, Event Horizon, It, Kronos, Candyman, Silence of the Lambs, Scream, I Know What You Did Last Summer, Misery, Arachnophobia, Seven, Ice Cream Man, The People Under the Stairs. Watch a thon prompt nine. Watch any 90s movie or TV show episode. Beauty and the Beast, The Hunchback of Notre Dame, Mrs. Doubtfire, Mighty Ducks, Space Jam, The Sandlot, Cool Runnings, Blank Check. Dennis the Menace, Batman Mask of the Phantasm, The Page Master, A Goofy Movie, Heavyweights, Babe, Home Alone, Free Willy, Jingle All the Way, Hook, Jumanji, Matilda, My Girl, Fern Gully, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers the Movie, Star Kid, Homeward Bound, Muppet Treasure Island, Indian in the Cupboard, Jungle to Jungle, George of the Jungle, Flubber, Fly Away Home, Rockadoodle, It Takes Two, The Parent Trap, The Remake, The Rugrats Movie, Little Giants, Once Upon a Forest, Pebble and the Penguin, Honey, We Blew Up the Kid, any of the 90s DCOMs, Suzy Q, Wish Upon a Star, The Paper Brigade, The Princess and the Goblin, My Date with the President's Daughter, H.E. Double Hockey Sticks, The Iron Giant, Kazam, First Kid, A Kid in King Arthur's Court, Rookie of the Year, Angels in the Outfield, Trading Mom, Just Like Dad, How the West Was Fun, Now and Then, We're Back, A Dinosaur Story, so many options! And if you want to do spooky movies in honor of Halfway to Halloween, we've got The Witches, The Halloween Tree, Nightmare Before Christmas, Ernest Scared Stupid, James and the Giant Peach, Casper, Double Double Toil and Trouble, and of course, Hocus Pocus. Some examples of 90s TV shows. I've got a list of some cartoons for you guys on the rec document. Also, you can watch any Nickelodeon show, any Disney Channel show from the 90s, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, Dinosaurs, Boy Meets World, Sabrina the Teenage Witch, Gargoyles, Tiny Toon Adventures, Dexter's Lab, Animaniacs, Bobby's World, The Magic School Bus, Where in the World is Carmen Sandiego, Captain Planet, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Eerie Indiana, Dawson's Creek, My So-Called Life, Freaks and Geeks, Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, Batman the Animated Series, Growing Pains was in the 80s and 90s, Roseanne, Third Rock from the Sun, Seinfeld, Twin Peaks, Home Improvement, South Park, and Pinky and the Brain, plus much more. And if you still need more recs, of course, we've got our host recommendations for books and for movies. There's tons. We'll be having some group watch parties so you don't have to watch movies alone for every single movie or show you watch. We will be having some awesome watch parties of cartoons of different 80s and 90s movies. It's going to be a freaking blast. I cannot wait. All right, guys, I hope you found those recommendations helpful. And if not, if you already have your TBR, 
Star and TBW planned, then I hope you enjoyed just hearing me talk about some old school nostalgic things and it brought a smile to your face perhaps, at least. Thank you so much for watching guys. I think this is it. I'm gonna end it here because it's been such a long video. I can't believe I talked this long. Alright guys, for this time, that is it for me. Till next time, you know what you can do. Keep on killing it. And get ready to kick it old school. I can't wait for April. Bye guys.